Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about Harbor, which is a CNCF project. It is an open source trusted cloud native registry. Uh, it, has, it has lots of fantastic features for enterprises, uh, but the one I'm going to focus on today is vulnerability scanning with uh, our open source uh, vulnerability scanner, which is called uh, Trivi. Uh, so to start with, we need to install Harbor. Uh, usually you, you go to GitHub releases pages and download the online or offline installer. Um, so I've already done that and, and downloaded the Harbor uh, installer to my local disk. And uh, I can now extract it. And uh, then you need to edit the Harbor YAML file, which is a configuration template. I've also done that, so I just need to copy it into the Harbor directory. And then I could just launch the installer. Um, it's pretty fast. Um, as you can see, uh, it's a set of Docker um, containers running based on the um, Docker Compose file that was created uh, by the installer. If everything goes well, uh, we should be able to log in to the hardware portal, which is a UI interface to the registry. Um, so the thing uh, I want to show you is how to add Trivi as an image vulnerability scanner when you use the online installer. and uh, which means when you use Docker and Docker Compose rather than uh, Helm, uh, Helm charts or Kubernetes. Um, so the first thing is to uh, create a directory for the 3D adapter. Um, and then to create a file which contains environment, uh, environment variables for the 3D scanner adapter service. And the last step is to create a Docker Compose override file. And this mechanism allows us to extend the Docker Compose file created by the installer and uh, add a 3 d service. And the most important thing to know here is that we are using an image, our official image published to Docker Hub. And uh, we point it to the environment files, which we just created in, the, in a previous step. Uh, with that, um, the last step is to tell Docker Compose uh, to take this new service into account. And in the meantime, we could click Add New Scanner button, give it a name, and use 3D Adapter. This is the name of a, uh, of a service that we used in a Docker Compose override file, which defaults to the host name of a container. By default, the adapter is running on, is listening on port 8080. If we test the connection, we see it passed. So we could edit. Let's test connection, edit. And yeah, there was like a, I think, temporary issue with the proxy. Anyway, as you can see, Trivi is uh, installed. There's a bunch of useful information, such as a version of Trivi, uh, some configuration uh, that we specified as environment variables, and uh, it's marked as the default scanner. Um, so now if we push an image to the registry, uh, I have Alpine here. If I go to projects, library, repositories, and click can uh, the 3D, the, the hardware um, registry will delegate scanning to the adapter which calls 3D, which at the end sends back the vulnerability information to uh, hardware uh, to finally uh, display it in the UI. Um, the first scan is usually takes a bit more time because 3D downloads the vulnerability database from, from the internet, but the subsequent scans are faster. As you can see, we found some three medium vulnerabilities in the OpenSSL and one with severity low. Uh, also, you could click uh, this little icon here and navigate to additional information about this vulnerability. Uh, one more interesting feature is that on top of scanning operating system packages, 
uh, 3D could scan uh, application dependencies. At least we do support some of the languages. Uh, and for example, mm, Node.js dependencies. I have this very simple app which depends on Extra.js version 3.0, which is the old one. Uh, I could wrap it into a, a, a Docker container and then build an image and push it to registry. Um, and then be able to scan it. And this time on top of operating system vulnerability, operating system, on top of vulnerabilities in operating system packages, we'll see vulnerabilities in Node.js packages and direct and transitive dependencies. So if we go here, yep, this, for example, this one is a vulnerability in Express.js as expected. And we could read more about it and see that it's fixed in version 3.11. I will leave it as exercise for you to upgrade uh, my app to the latest version of Express and make sure that it is not vulnerable anymore. Have fun. Thank you.